QN1, equation 1. The three, I think they actually call them the special formulas, the kinematics, and like that. I don't know what's so special about them. Um, some of you will say to me, I sure wish you had showed us those in grade 11, Mr. Bennett. I say to that, well, you really weren't ready for them yet. Now you're ready. Yeah. Well, I think so. Maybe. Most of you. Okay, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you've graduated to the big leagues, now you're, you're ready for the, for the special equations. They are increasingly more challenging to derive. Again, do not worry about deriving, you only need to be able to use. Okay, the first one is so simple. Yes, and as they said, yes, the physics convention, don't drink and derive. <coughs> yeah. Are you familiar with this formula, A equals delta B over delta T? You should be. If you aren't, you're in trouble. Okay. Now, you know that delta V is VF minus VI. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to, is this delta V and that delta V the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm going to replace this delta V with... And some of you were actually doing this type of thing last time around. I'm going to just sort of let the delta part in the T magically disappear. I probably shouldn't. A lot of textbooks won't do it. It makes it look cluttered. It just makes it look more difficult than it really needs to be. Most of the time, 99% of the time in doing a problem like this, the time, the initial time will be zero. zero. Right? And so do you really need to go 17 seconds minus zero or 21 seconds minus zero? Come on. Right? So most of the time it's just plain old T. There may be the odd occasion where delta T is required. Just remember, oh yeah, it's the chain, it's the time interval that we're talking about here, and you'll be able to do it. Should be not a problem. It just kind of keeps the formula a little cleaner, I think. Now I'm going to solve this or isolate it for VF. So the T goes where? T goes up there, right? This is a divide by. So really what I'm doing is Multiplying both sides by t, right? Okay, so over here I'm going to get at is equal to vf minus vi. What are we looking for? We're going we're gonna to come up with a vf at the end. I want vf equals. Okay, and then that vi is going to go to the other side and become plus. And we tend to write it out front. And we tend to write it with the vf starting. So there it is. That's all there is to it. Nothing too earth shattering. Special equation number one. Vf equals vi plus a. Could you have used that in grade 11? Sure. Right? Most, most of you could use it for finding the final velocity when you're given the initial and you need to have any acceleration in the time, right? In fact, this tends to avoid, you remember, who has saw this on their test in grade 11? Delta V is not equal to V bar. Yeah, some of you would have. Using this will avoid that because you'll notice that here, there's no, right? It goes straight to VF. And most people get that the final velocity is not equal to the average. So start using that. And if you start and you sort of think about it, the final velocity is whatever the initial velocity was plus what's A times T. The change in the velocity, right? Look at this here. Change, change in the velocity is a times t, right? Um, what if the vo initial velocity is zero? Just don't put it in there, right? Put a zero in there, it's no big deal, right? Okay, so that's special equation number one. That's the easy one. All good? Everyone's good with that? That's sort of the beginner derivation one. Awesome. Okay, commence mind blowing. Give me a second here to gather my thoughts before I do this with you, because I want to make sure I get this right. Okay. You can. This is part of the derivation. It's, a, a derivation is simply a series of logical <laughs> steps mostly algebraic, but uh, at times there's some text in there to describe what's going on, right? So what did I write here? I wrote displacement is the area 
under a VT graph, right? Pretty fancy, eh? Displacement is the area under a VT graph. So I'm going to now draw a VT graph. And I'm going to draw it carefully here. Okay, so I've got VI and VF, and I've got T1 and T2. I guess TI and TF, same thing, right? We know that the displacement is the area under the VT graph. So I am referring to this shaded in red portion. What shape is that shaded in red portion? Geometric shape. It's not a nice one. You're right. Oh, Zach's thinking I can see. What is it, Zach? The, well, it's a rectangle underneath, right? It wouldn't necessarily be a square. I'm not, actually. I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull it out of there, which is why I drew it in that color. It's like a lopsided square. It's something. Half of a trapezoid, says DeRoche. In fact, you're half wrong because it's actually a trapezoid. A tra not a very good trapezoid. <laughs> Fair enough. It's not, it's not a stereotypical trapezoid, right? A trapezoid generally looks like this, right? It usually has two. I think the correct definition of a trapezoid, if I'm not mistaken, is that it has one set of parallel lines, right? Am I right? But this only has one set of parallel lines, or sides, this one and this one. These ones aren't parallel. This one just happens to be straight up and down. Okay. Tricky. So this is a trapezoid. Now, do you know the formula for the area of a trapezoid? Because we're talking about displacement is area under the VT graph. What? I'll give you a hint. I'll give you the letters that you need. This is the height, and this one is side one, and this one is side two. Does that jog any memories? No? And I'm not surprised. I don't even know if they teach area of a trapezoid at any point in time. No? I don't know. Okay. Well, then I'll just tell you. Yeah. Area of a trapezoid is side one plus side two divided by two times height. Well done. Now, really what you're doing there is a trapezoid is kind of like a rectangle. What's the area of a rectangle? Length times width, right? So in this case here, it would be like, this could be the length and this could be the width, right? The width is the h. So is this like the length? Imagine if you took S2 and sort of scrunched it in at the bottom, what would happen to S1 at the top? It would sort of push out, right? Or what would happen if I did this? I'm going to do it. Uh, did I do that right? No, I got to do it. Sorry. I got to do it like that. You're so close to that. Right? Is that not still S2? And is that, what is that now? Oh, did I do this wrong? It looks like a rectangle now, right? You still see two triangles? Oh, we don't have this part on here anymore. Oh, so this isn't S2, is it? Really what I've done is I've taken the, I'm going to get rid of that because that's confusing you. Yeah, I did. What I've done, what does this do? What does S1 plus S2 divided by 2 do? Takes the... Add two things together, divide by 2. I got 50 on the first test, 60 on the second one. Average 55. 
This is simply the average of the sides, right? That's all that is. Okay. Let's go back. Now, this rectangle here, sorry, this trapezoid, right, that I took out was really like this, right? So let me go this one here. So this is my H, and this is my side 1, and this is my side 2, right? I decide which ones are your side 1s and side 2s. Oh, it doesn't matter which ones. They're interchangeable, opposite sides, yeah. That's so is H the same as side 1 then? Oh, no, that doesn't make sense, does it? Uh, you're right, that doesn't make sense, yeah. The H should be, this is the H, ah, I did that backwards, didn't I? Yeah, that makes more sense. Not like that, right? Thank you. I made, See, I knew I needed to gather my thoughts, and I screwed this up. What do you do with the other side? Side 3? Or this one here? Yeah. yeah, I don't worry about it. Did we worry about it over here? No. No. Okay, so now I'm going to take this guy here, and I'm going to do this, right? But now... S2 goes there, side 1 goes there, and the H goes there, right? And I'm going to superimpose that over here. So my H goes there, and I realize you can't do this in your notes, but I'm just sort of showing you. Just watch. Don't write. Just watch. So the H, the height, is really T1 to T2. Hey, that's just that thing I got rid of before, delta T, isn't it? Yeah. The height of this trapezoid is the difference between the two Ts. Good? And side 1 is up to there. Well, that's just VI. And S2, that's up to there. Well, that's just VF. So I'm going to take this formula now, but instead of S1 and S2 and H, I'm going to replace that with these new letters that I've got over here. And the area is side 1, which is this one here, which is VI. And can you see why I don't ask you to do this on the test? S2 is here. That is VF. So S1 plus S2 is VI plus VF all over 2 times the height, which is my delta T. So that was a lot of logic to get to there, right? Mind yeah, mind blown. That's okay. Yeah. It's an experience. It's kind of like going on a roller coaster. You fun the first time, and after that, it's not much fun. It Actually, this is nothing like that because this is not fun the first time. Yeah, right. Never mind. <laughs> okay, now I'm not even close to done. That A is the displacement, right? Because the area under BT graph is displacement. What I really want is, is I need a formula that's got D that, that deals with the displacement and the time. Do you remember? Do you remember? Don't write this part down. Do you remember having to do these kind of problems? Yes. And you always had to do what? Find the average velocity first, and quite often people got it wrong. They put delta v in there. They put vi in there. They got it wrong. It's a pain in the butt. This v bar stuff, Mr. Bennett. I want a formula that I don't have to use that stuff. I'm going to give you that today. I'm going to write d equals. V I no, I'm just this is the next step. This is still equation two. This is still equation two. Wait, so area equals displacement? Area is the displacement under a VT graph. Remember, once you go through this experience, then you can use the formula. Oh yeah, you do. D equals now. Is there another way that I can write V I plus V F over two? Can I just bring that divide by 2 out front and put a 1 half times VI plus VF? Is that the same thing? All I did was take this divide by 2 and make it as a half out front. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half, right? Okay. And now I'm going to multiply the whole thing by T. And again, the delta part of T disappears because most of the time T1 is equal to 0. And if it's not, just deal with it. Okay, now here's where, <laughs> if you thought your mind was blown before, here's where I'm going to take VF, and what did I learn back in equation number one? I learned that VF is VI plus AT. Just wait, the next one has fractions in it. So now I'm going to take VF equals VI plus AT, and I'm going to take that and plug it in for that VF. 
So I get one half, I'll get to it, VI plus, and I'm going to put it in red to show you, VI plus AT all multiplied by T. Does my color coding make sense? I'm just going to pause and let you look at it, because I know that, I, that you need to do that. I took this VF in black, and I replaced it with this VF in red, VI plus AT. I put VI plus AT in red in place of the black VF. Thank you, Mandy, for that feedback. That's good. I need to see more of that. That's good. No, trust me. When I see the nod, then that's good. It means I'm, even you understand. It helps me because I know that I can go on. No hope? Okay, hope's giving me the opposite of that. Which part, hope? Everything. Oh, everything. Oh, I hate that answer. Okay, we'll, I'll come back and we'll talk some more. It's okay. It'll come. Hang in there. Okay. Now, I uh, was it Ryan that said, what did, what did you want me to do? Oh, it was you, Zach? Can you square Can you square this? This is VI plus VI. Okay. But you're on the right track, right? You want to combine them. Yeah. VI plus VI is 2VI plus AT times T. Why are we using two VIs? Oh, there are two VIs. There's two VIs. Okay. Okay. Very close to the end. Multiply everything all together and cancel in one big giant step. I got one thing times a big bracket times a third thing, right? Is this the last one? Um, it can be if I, if I scrunch a bit, yeah. I'm, try, I'm trying to gauge whether I should do this. In, should I do this in a one step or a two step? One step. Two step? Yeah, do it in two step. Okay, I'm going to do it. Those of you that only want one step, just. Let's, let's multiply the T by, or you want to multiply by the half by everything. Doesn't matter. We'll do the half first. So one half times 2VI is VI. And one half times AT is. By two. How about one half at? Why did we take out the division in the first place? The divide by two, eh, so that we could do this here. That we could do this adding thing here. You take it out so you can add and you put it back in. But that whole thing has to be multiplied by t. t. So here's the last step. T times vi is vit plus, and here you go, Zach. And that, my friends, is special equation number two. It was a lot of work to get to that, right? That is an extremely useful formula. The displacement is the initial velocity multiplied by the time plus one half at squared. <laughs> at squared. And I want you to stop and think about it. Back in grade 10, you might have seen this. D equals V times T, right? Okay. This, my friends, is exactly the same as that part right there. Right? Except this is VI and this is V bar. But this V bar you had in grade 10 was when the velocity remained the same. So the displacement is the distance it would go if the velocity remained the same plus the distance it would go if it's accelerating. This is the distance it would go if the velocity remained the same. This is the distance it would go if it accelerates. And then you add the two together, right? Deep breaths. Because you're going to need it for special equation number three. Who loves fractions out there? Steve loves fractions. <laughs> oh, you so are not going to like this. If you're anywhere near the bottom of a page, I should have told you before I wrote that, start a new page. No. Oh, yeah. It's real? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Take equation one and isolate for T. You can do that too. Take equation one and isolate T. Equation one was VF equals VI plus AT. Follow the notes, don't go on a rebel thing here. Ben. Isolate for T. Can you do that in your head? Yes. Some of you probably can. I'll do it in short steps for others. No problem. I want to isolate for T. The VI has to go to the other side. I get VF minus VI is equal to AT. Divide both sides by A. T equals VF minus VI all over A. Do you understand the need for grade 11 math or even possibly grade 12 math before physics 40s? Yes. Yes. No, but but you have experience manipulating things around, right? Like with formulas, right? So it's very helpful. Okay, we've isolated T. Now I'm going to substitute into equation number two. Equation number two said D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. And do you see what's going to happen? And are you scared? Okay, you will be very soon. We are going to, the reason we do this is we want, we need another formula because sometimes you don't have the time. We need one that has the D and the V's, but no time. I'm going to take this here, and it's going to go in for it. Oh, yeah. T there. Not only there, but also. And T squared is, oh, it's, just, it's going to be a beauty, a thing of beauty. Do not worry, my friends. I am your guide. I've been down this road before. Right don't write big, but like, you know, don't write skimpy kind of. You want it nice and big. And, okay, so I'm going to write in blue D equals VI. And now in black, I'm going to replace the blue T with this. Are we good with that? What I've done, at least, you may not like it, but. <laughs> plus one half of A, and now I'm going to write <laughs> and then you just solve it, right? No problem. You guys can do that, right? <laughs> I want a formula, no numbers, right? We're just manipulating the formula here. Don't worry about this. I'm with you. Follow the notes. Because sometimes I, I go on a, I know what I'm doing, and then I get myself sort of hung up and all those. Okay. This means what? VI multiplied by everything in there, right? So I'm going to write VI times VF is VI VF. VI times minus VI. Minus VI squared. Multiply, not add. Multiply all over A. How do you feel about me writing one half A? How do you feel about me writing like that as like half or A over two? Is that okay? Can I write it like that? One half A is the same as A divided by two, right? Just to sort of simplify that a bit. Now, what do you know about squaring some mess like that? No, you don't. As an aside, x minus y squared. Who knows how to square a binomial? 2x minus y. As in like x minus y times x minus y. Yeah, okay. And then what's the rule that Mr. Ray teaches you about that these days? Yeah? Y 
Doesn't he give you some kind of magic sort of Mr. Ray rule or something rather to do that? Yeah, you square, square the first one, you square the second one. Yeah. And then, right. and then you combine the two in the middle and times it by, by two. By yep. two, yep. Yep, you're right. So that, that's the simple sort of probably grade 11, I think, right? Early grade 11, maybe? No. Are you serious? We don't really use it very often. Okay. Okay, whatever. Okay. But I gotta do that with VF and VI. Possible? Sure. VI is your VF is your X and VI is your Y, no problem. So it's gonna be VF times VF, which is VF squared. Oh, you're squaring the I'm squaring the, the top, right? And then out on the end, can I put out on the end? Yes, you can. VI squared, kind of like this guy here, right? Why is it plus? Because it's minus Y times minus Y, right? Minus VI times minus VI is plus VI squared. And what do we have in the middle, Steve? You said it right. Combine the two and multiply by two. I got to move that over a bit. And it's not going to be plus. It's, it's negative here. Oh. So it's going to be minus V I V I O two two. two. Whoa, what it be? Does it matter if it's V I? Okay, they're going to multiply it anyways. Yeah, you usually go alphabetical kind of thing here. Well, I guess F comes first, doesn't it? Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I don't know why I put V I V F. It doesn't matter. Keep it the same as this guy here. Now, I made one other mistake here. Did anyone spot it? No. They're very good. Okay. Now, again, please do not worry if you're thinking like, oh, my God, I'm never going to be able to do this on a test. You're not going to have to. This is an experience. Okay? Once you're done with this, you're done. Check. We derive formulas. Yay for us. Now comes the tricky part. <laughs> oh, yeah. I actually enjoyed showing you this. That, yeah. Well, okay. I got to do sort of what I call like a bit of a cleanup step here. Okay? I'm going to rewrite this first one in its entirety because it needs no cleaning up. Now, what happens over here, clean up kind of wise? Can we combine this together? So I got one thing plus one other ugly thing. This A and this A squared down here will leave me with a? A. Where? Actually, I don't know. On the bottom. <laughs> right? You got an A here, and you got an A squared here, so you get an A on the top and an A on the bottom that, that cancel, and you got an A left on the bottom. And this two here can go where? In front of that right there, right? Everyone's kind of comfortable with that? I took this A and this A squared and, and cancelled, so I, this one went away. Oh, yeah. so and this this one loses a squared, right? Yeah. And then the two just sort of oh, yeah. nudges in there. It's, it's two times. It's, it's this. Like if this is a two, this is a times by A, just put it all under like that. Okay. And then the top, nothing happens here. It's just like I said, I call it the cleanup step. Okay, real, real close. Back in mm, grade 7 or 8, you learned about adding fractions. How do we add Common fractions? Denominator. Common denominator. The denominator is the thing on the bottom. When you say common, you mean the they have to be the same. A is not the same as 2A. Very good. Multiply the first one by 2. Top and bottom, right? Because when you multiply by 2 over 2, you're multiplying by 1 and not changing the overall value. So, all of this stays the same out here. And yes, I realize it's kind of a big waste. We're getting oh, close. The first chunk there is we're, still the same? No, we're going to clean that up. We're going to oh, multiply that. That's, That's the part. Yeah, I just wanted to do that, right? right. We're about two steps away here. The, it, at the very end, it just sort of collapses. And it's like, well, that's it? It's kind of anticlimactic. Multiply top and bottom by 2. Now, can I, do you want me to put 2 in a bracket 
and then the next step multiplied in, or can we sort of put the two and multiply it in kind of all in the same step? I think we can do that. I think you're at that step. So two times V I V F is two V I V F and two times minus V I squared is minus two V I squared. And here's the magic step. When you add the fractions, it's something over the, the first common denominator plus the other one, right? You can write the whole thing as over, right? Like it's like three quarters plus two quarters. You write it all over four. That's going to be five quarters, right? You see what's happening here? Okay. A whole lack of canceling. 2VIVF minus 2VI squared, and then this guy, plus, and are you happy that that's a plus in between? Yeah, and you should know why. VF squared minus 2VIVF plus VI squared. And here's the best part. So much fun, I'm going to put it in blue. What cancels? The I and then one of the VI squared. Those go away. Two VIVFs minus two VIVFs is nothing. How do you feel about me putting the VF squared out front? Okay with that? Sure. Why do I do that? Because I got minus two VI squared plus a VI squared <laughs> is negative VI squared. Look at that. I didn't even need all that big line out there. Oh, well, let me do that. Almost done. Well, now it's now it's sort of the make it look pretty because no one likes a fraction in their formula, right? Nobody likes fractions in their formula. So I'm going to bring this 2a and I'm going to multiply it up here. This is sort of like the cleanup here. 2ad. Well, it's nobody likes fractions. Most people like formulas that have one letter on one side and then the rest on the other, right? With no fractions. We like it that way. Well, that's how I like it. Well, what if you're looking for... Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Are you, are you going to find V by square root anyway? Yep. Look at that. Now, should I write that as most people like it like this? <laughs> Holy moly. Oh, okay. Wait, you're not going to square root it? No, we're going to leave it like that. Okay. People don't generally like square roots that far. Like like if you're solving for VF, you'll have to square root though, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know when you go to those tourist places and you do something wild and crazy, you know, you jump off by and you get a t-shirt that says, I survived the uh, something or other? I always feel like at this point I should give you a t-shirt that says, I survived special equation number three derivation. If I had a budget for it, I'd give you a t-shirt. Would you wear it? No. No, nobody would wear it, which is the other reason why I don't do it. Congratulations, you survived special equation number three derivation. In class, maybe I wear it. <laughs> Painting the deck? I wear it at all. Do you feel good about yourself? That oh, yeah, it's a huge waste of time. There's no doubt about that. But. You should, you, should, you should feel good in the sense, even if you don't get it in its entirety, that you can sort of kind of follow it with maybe a couple of missing steps, you're not sure, right? It's fine. So, what do you have to be able to do from here on in? Use VF equals VI plus AT and know what those letters stand for. Use T equals VIT plus a half AT squared. And use... VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Well done. Now, there's a little sort of bonus feature here. I won't make you derive this because it is nasty. And I don't even think they do it in high school anymore. I'm going to write a formula up. Please hold your applause until I'm done. 
so don't write it. <laughs> no, you'll, you'll want to write it, actually. Yeah. But, but I know you'll love it so much that you'll want to cheer, but the noise will be deafening. Oh, no. See? I told you, hold your applause. Wait, I hate it when the headphones are. Oh, really? No. Hey, have you ever seen the derivation for the quadratic formula? You don't want to. No, no, no. I'm not going to drive it. I'm just saying, here it is. Remember it. We're going to use it. The, the, the actual course says you don't need to derive. They don't, you only have to derive those three. But will you need to use this? Yes. Is there anyone in here that hasn't done quadratic formula in math yet? There's no way. Everyone has seen the quadratic formula? Not sure? Okay. I will, might have to help you guys. It, is it in grade 11 or 12 now? It's in grade 11? You use it in grade 12 like once or twice. Is that right? You use it once. Yeah. You use it when what? You complete the square. Oh, yeah. That completing the square nonsense. <laughs> I, don't you use it for finding the zeros? Sometimes, and then you can't find the right Yeah. Okay. So, unfortunately, in physics, they're not nice integer zeros. They're going to be ugly ones. And one of them is going to be Marty McFly back in time. <laughs> so, you're going to have to solve for the positive one. Okay. And you're going to see that when we do the book examples, the hard ones, probably on Monday. Okay. But we will be using that. I just wanted to show you how all the formulas in one spot. That's everything you need going forward. Are we going to have to change? A car moving along the level road increases speed uniformly from 16 to 32 in 10 seconds. What is the car's acceleration? What is its average speed? How far did it move while accelerating? Do we use the fun formula? Yeah, absolutely. I'm encouraging you to use the fun formula. Now, there's always one or two, and it sounds like Hannah's going to be one of them, that wants to try to do it the grade 11 way. You're go there's going to be a limit to how, like, it's kind of like having a governor on a car or a, a motorbike or something like that, right? Like, eventually you're going to have to. You can't solve everything with those grade 11 formulas. Okay? Or you're going to make it harder and stuff. So, what is the car's acceleration? I recommend VF equals VI plus AT. Now, I know some of you like to do this. A car moving along the road increases speed uniformly from 16. That's the VI. That's the VF. That's the time, right? In grade 9, I teach them and I encourage them to write out VI equals 16, VF equals 32, T equals 10. If you like doing that, you do that. If you don't like doing that, you think that's a waste of time, don't do that. Do what works for you. But please do write the formula. What am I solving here for? I'm solving for A. Plug in your numbers. The VF is? 32, line up your equals. Is this the special equation 1? Yeah, special equation 1. Vf equals Vi plus At. Isn't it? Yeah. What's a plus if I was not a T? No, oh yeah. I try to, that's a plus. I try to make my T's with that little sort of tail there. 16 plus A times 10, right? 16 goes to the other side. 32 minus 16 is equal to, really, I guess that should be 10A. Yeah. A equals 32 minus 16 all over 10, 1.6 meters per second squared. Please note how I've got it all nice and lined up. This drives me nuts, people. When, when people do this, I don't know why they do this. They want to put things like, like a poem or something rather, kind of. Staircase. I, why did? Why? Because it's creativity. It just uses up space. Oh, they're gonna want my attendance. <laughs> oh, I didn't record that. There's a reason why I do these three steps in a row. How far did it move while accelerating? Okay. Two ways you could solve this. The grade 11 way would be to take the average velocity and <laughs> multiply by the time, and you can do it in your head, 24 times 10, 240. Okay? Yes. How far did it move? That's actually pretty easy to do. But that's assuming that 
I asked you be in the first place? Can you go from here? Like, could, what if I didn't even give you A? What if I just said, how far did it move while accelerating? Yeah, I guess I need to give you A. Then you know you could do the I want to know D V I T plus one half A T squared. By using that, you sort of bypass this middle formula here, and I've left myself not much room. A lot of the time, the initial velocity is going to be zero. Today, it's not going to be. Wow. Because it's what? 16. So it's going to be 16 oh. times 10 plus the acceleration of 1.6, 10 squared. And I apologize for this terrible rating here. Now, you should be able to take your calculator and do that all in one big giant step. Oh, that's nice. Half of 1.6 is 0.8. 10 squared is 100. Wait, what are we looking for? <laughs> how far did it go? Yep, how far did it go while it was accelerating? The answer is 240, which is the same as what we came up with when we took that average 24 multiplied by the 10 in our head. So, my point here is, and I'm going to wrap this up. There's no sense doing number two here. My point here is, is that if you don't have this average, you can go straight to here using special formula number two, two I guess it is, right? How would you feel about trying number two on your own for tomorrow? you got seven minutes. Try number two for tomorrow. I'll give you the answer tomorrow. If you want, do it in pencil. You should have enough space. If you want to just sort of draw a line and do it on the left-hand side, you probably got room for that. Okay? Try that on the left-hand side. And then we'll wrap up there.